Hi, I'm Billy Fanning. I'm the senior leader here at All Nations. And here's my thought for the week. On the first Sunday of this year, I spoke about how we as Christians can look to the past and thank God for the many accomplishments. But what we need is to look at tomorrow at our possibilities. Because with God, all things are possible. And God does not want us to live in the past. He wants us to have a dream for tomorrow. I told you the story about the revival that went on in 1859 in Northern Ireland, where many thousands came to know Christ as their Savior, when God moved upon that land by the power of his Spirit. It all happened in a place called Coleraine, when a boy in a schoolyard was so convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit that he started to shake. His friends, his classmates came out, and they too came under the same conviction. That revival moved upon Northern Ireland in many towns and cities. If you go back to Coleraine today, you'll see a plaque there in the town hall to the glory of God for the spiritual revival in 1859, where this building was used, where many find Christ as their Savior in the days of continual Pentecost. I love the end of that phrase, continual Pentecost. Because if we're going to be effective for God, we need to know continual Pentecost. It's no use you and I saying, well, I was baptized and filled with the Spirit 10, 15 years ago, but today I'm not filled. God wants us to be continually being filled with the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, being open to the Spirit, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. That day I talked about us having a dream of God. Our God sometimes, our thinking of God is far too small. God is great, and with God all things are possible. We need a vision and a dream, not only of God, but of ourselves, who we are. Thank God that God has given us all things in Christ, that we can do all things in Christ that greater is he that, who is in you than he that is in the world. We have been given the keys of the kingdom, power, authority, and dominion. I also mentioned about we need not only a vision and a dream of God and of ourselves, but of our communities. And this is where rubber hits the road. We give God thanks for his blessing. But if we are to live in continual Pentecost, then we must be effective in the communities in which we live. The Quakers were known as Quakers because they quaked and they shaked when they were moved by the Spirit. They ruled about the floor in laughter. They were called holy rulers. But they didn't stay on the floor. They got up from the floor and they changed society in which they lived. Many of our great social reforms happened because of the Quakers. Prison reform, welfare, slavery. It all happened because these people were moved by God, but they did something about it. George Cadbury was a Quaker. He was not just the owner of a chocolate factory, but he made homes for his workers. Barclays Bank was started by Quakers. You see, when God moves upon you by the Spirit of God, it can't stay within the walls of a local church. We need to get out into our communities and establish and see the rule of God being manifested, being revealed in the lives and the communities in which we live. And so here's the challenge. In your workplace— God has given you the keys of the kingdom. Let the rule of God be expressed in your workplace. It may be that you pray for your, your fellow workers. It may be you get opportunity to talk about God. 
But let us not hide this light that God has given to us. Let this light shine in the midst of darkness. And like the Quakers, let us, yeah, be filled with the Spirit, but let us be effective in the communities in which we live. God bless you. Thank you.